Well, let's begin. We're over 150. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas Astaba. I'm the coordinator with Net Zero Cities uh, and with EIT Climate Kick. Uh, this is the first of our three webinars, informational webinars related to the European Union missions. This one, Climate Neutral and Smart Cities. Uh, and this specifically is a webinar to uh, share information and answer questions related to the call for expressions of interest uh, from cities, uh, which was released by um, the mission last week. Uh, with me today, we have several, uh, several colleagues from the EU who are part of the mission implementation team, as well as from the JRC who've been uh, instrumental in putting together the expression of interest, as well as the information kit uh, with which you probably already have had an opportunity to take a look at and begin to familiarize yourself with the information it contains. Uh, in today's webinar, if we go to the next slide, Chiu, thank you. Today's webinar, uh, which is, as I mentioned, the first of three, we will focus on the first part of the questionnaire, uh, addressing topics around eligibility, the additional information questions, the climate neutrality target, uh, the vision and ambition section, as well as current emissions. Um, there'll be more information at the end about the upcoming uh, other two webinars, which we'll be following uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks to give you more information throughout the rest of the uh, expression of interest in the questionnaire. Um, and so with me today, we have two, uh, two panelists who will be presenting information and we have several who will be uh, contributing in the question and answer period. Philippe Froussard, head of unit DG Research and Innovation and Nadia Vetters, policy officer with the Joint Research Center, also with the commission. Uh, and at this point, I will turn it over to Philippe to begin with the first part of this webinar. So take it away, Philippe. Thank you very much, Thomas, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, first webinar, which uh, has the objective of uh, presenting to you the questionnaire that uh, we will uh, invite you to, to fill in if you want to respond to this call for expression of interest for the city's mission. Uh, so basically, it's a very practical uh, webinar that we want to organize uh, with you and we want to have with you today in a sense that we will, uh, we will organize a guided tour of the questionnaire. We will go through the different questions that uh, uh, are part of the questionnaire. We are going to focus our attention on the first part of the questionnaire to start with. And uh, we will welcome your questions and we'll try to answer as best as we can uh these questions uh, during the this session of course it goes without saying that if you have more questions and we may need more time to answer some of these questions we will also collect them from the chat and uh, we will provide them uh, with uh, with a written uh, response and answers and we will update as a consequence the frequently asked question documents that uh, we already uh, that we have already compiled and uh, that has been put live in um, on our website but uh, maybe before I go through the guided tour of the questionnaire, uh, I would like to remind you of the different types of documents and events that we have already organized so far. If I can have the next slide, please. So the, the documents, the basic documents that we have already prepared and uh, put live and uh, uploaded on our websites are listed there. Uh, Thomas has mentioned it already, the info kit for the cities. It's a, it's a very important document which provides quite a lot of information to uh, potential applicants on um, what we want to do uh, for, with the mission in terms of uh, climate neutrality, the reduction of greenhouse gases emission. I really invite you to have a look at this document before filling in the, the questionnaire because you will find quite a lot of information. Uh, there that, uh, that will provide you with, uh, with, the, um, with, uh, with data and insight on uh, as regard what type of information we are looking for uh, in this call for expression of interest. Uh, the call for expression of interest uh, itself, I mean, you have here the link for uh, registering and uh, being able to access the, the questionnaire. We have also provided you with a PDF version of the questionnaire that uh, you can have a look at. Uh, which is available on our website um, uh, on Europa. And if I can have the next slide. So this is the first webinar, which is a technical webinar where we will go through the, the different parts of the questionnaire, but there have been other webinars that we have organized 
since the, the official launch of the missions that was uh, on the 29th of September. On the 1st of October, specifically, we had the, the official launch of the city's mission. Uh, that was the subject of uh, an extensive presentation uh, done by uh, our mission manager, Matthew Baldwin. And uh, you have here the link uh, of the recording of that webinar together with the document that I mentioned, the frequently asked questions, which is a compilation of the questions that we collected uh, in this first, web first webinar on the 1st of October. Next slide, please. More recently, last week, to be more precise, on the 25th of November, we had uh, another event that was important, which took place uh, in the Committee of Regions. And here you have the, the, the video link for the, of this event. There again, I think it is interesting for you to, to go through these different videos because you will find that most of the questions that you may have have already been addressed and answered uh, either live by the participants, by the speakers, or have already been addressed in the frequently asked questions that I mentioned. Next slide. So maybe something to, to point out in this uh, first webinar, we have two more webinars that we want to organize to complete that cycle of uh, presentation of the questionnaire. The second one will be on the 10th of December and the third and last one will be on the 15th of December where we will complete the, the, the description of the different components, the different parts of the, the questionnaire. Next slide, please. So for further information, needless to say, you can always contact us using the functional mailbox uh, ec.cities-mission at ec.europa.eu. We have a web page where we have provided uh, all the documents that I mentioned, and you will find all the links to the, to the video recording. And uh, every time we will have new documents to, to upload, and uh, we will need to upload uh, uh, or amend uh, existing documents, you will find them on this page of Europa. So, Use that as a bookmark because you will find most of the information that uh, we have been discussing today uh, in this uh, this web page on Europa. So I think this is all I wanted to say as an introduction. Now what I would like to do is to actually open the, the questionnaire, and I believe that me doing that I will have to share my screen. Uh, I will do that straight away. So can you see the the, the questionnaire? Very good. Yes. So basically, this is what you see when you enter the EU survey, the questionnaire for the call for expression of interest of the climate neutral and smart cities mission. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I am uh, the mayor of a city and, uh, and I want to fill in that questionnaire and I will go through the different steps uh, in chronological order, starting with the welcome, the eligibility, the additional information, and then I will give the, the floor to my colleague Nadia will uh, address the, 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 the steps on ambition and current emission. So to start with, uh, you have uh, a welcome uh, from, uh, from the, 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 the mission uh, to the, the potential applicants. So it's a very simple text that we have put there, just uh, the scope of the mission that you, you can find with the, the double objective that we have for the Climate Neutral and Smart Cities mission. I'm not going to present again these objectives. I'm not going to present again the scope of the mission. This was the subject of previous webinars, so I take for granted that you know what we're talking about. What I want to, to insist today is on the, the practical uh, aspects of the questionnaire and what kind of information will be requested of you. So the mention there on the, uh, some of the specific aspects of the mission, where we mentioned the fact that we want to uh, attract the attention and, of all cities in Europe that uh, we want to be as inclusive as possible. And then there is a description of the type of information that is expected from, uh, from you in, when filling in the questionnaire. And there we mentioned that we will have some mandatory um, questions and elements that we ask you to, to, to provide under the eligibility and the additional information tabs. And these are actually the only parts of the questionnaire which are mandatory. So it doesn't mean that you can just fill in the eligibility and the additional information part of the questionnaire and just press submit, because that will be very little information that you will have submitted uh, as a consequence of, of that. So basically we invite you really strongly to provide as much information as possible 
on all the other components that we have in the questionnaire, because that will really help us understand a little bit better your ambition, your starting point, what is uh, your plan, your strategy, and the more you can provide in terms of information, the better it is. But strictly speaking, the only parts that are mandatory are the eligibility and the additional information sections. Then we have some information uh, regarding the languages, and I think this is quite important to stress at this stage. Uh, when you will have the opportunity to upload documents in the questionnaire, you can upload the document in English, or you can use uh, you can upload the document in any of the official any one of the official language of the EU. If you do that, then we will ask you to uh, upload as well a courtesy translation or a summary in English of that document. So we don't oblige you to, to, to provide all the documents in English, but we would be very grateful when you submit your documents uh, in your native language that uh, you provide a courtesy translation in English or a summary in English. Same goes with the questions that are in a free form text format. You have the possibility to fill them in in English, but you can also fill them in in your own language in any of the official, any one of the official language of the EU. But uh, then what uh, we need to, to, to explain to you is that we will very likely do a machine translation of those uh, answers so that we provide them uh, an English version to the, um, to the experts that will be in, involved in the follow-up follow -up evaluation of the, um, the application. So the, there is a section that I think is important to, to mention, which regards the participation of cities outside the EU. As you know, the, the, CIMI, the, the, the Climate Neutral and Smart Cities mission is uh, referred uh, as an EU mission. Uh, it, however, takes its root from the Horizon Europe Framework Program for Research Innovation, which uh, identifies that uh, beside the EU member states, you have the possibility for uh, countries associated to the framework program to benefit from the actions that are supported by the, the, the program on, of research, innovation, and innovation in Europe. In, so uh, as a consequence of that, uh, for the cities that will be participating in the cities mission and will very likely participate in the call for accession of interest, we have to open the possibility of uh, cities established in countries associated to Horizon Europe or in uh, other third countries negotiating such an association agreement to Horizon Europe to be involved in the mission by precisely replying to this call. What we need to, to, to stress on the other hand is that for those cities that are established in, the, um, in these countries associated to the program or in the process of negotiating their association to the program, they will need to uh, explain how they intend to implement their strategy for climate neutrality without the support of EU programs that are the, the, the typical EU programs that might provide some specific support beyond Horizon Europe to uh, EU cities that uh, are part of the EU missions. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, the, the situation for cities located in associated countries, they can be involved, but they will have to, uh, to take into account the fact that they will not be able to benefit from the same type of support that uh, cities located in EU member states might benefit from, particularly when it comes to the, 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 the investment uh, programs and the, 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 the financial initiatives that are available to EU cities. Uh, and they also, on top of that, will have to explain how they will go about the implementation of their strategy without the, the support and the help of this uh, specific EU program. As regard cities located in non-associated third countries, there we are not inviting, we are not advising those cities to fill in the questionnaire. They are uh, opportunities for uh, interaction and exchange of uh, information and practices, good practices between cities located outside Europe and uh, those that are part of the, uh, the, the city's mission that might uh, take place at a later stage. Uh, there will be a specific international outreach of the city's mission, which will allow precisely the interaction and the exchange of good practices 
between cities located outside Europe and those that are part of the mission. But this is not something that is part of this uh, expression of interest. So basically, this is something that we, we will look at at a later stage, the interaction between cities committed to uh, climate neutrality outside Europe and uh, with those that are part of the city's mission through the international outreach and dimension that the city's, will, uh, the city's mission will, uh, will uh, implement uh, at a later stage. And in any case, if you are actually from a, a city's located uh, in uh, non-associated third countries. And if you have questions regarding the city's mission, please contact us through the functional mailbox that is mentioned here in this uh, welcome address of the questionnaire. Then we have the standard uh, parts on the GDPR that we ask you to, to, to confirm. There are two sections there, the one on the personal data protection and the one on the technical data that are collected uh, as part of this questionnaire. So basically, we are just telling you that um, we are only going to use the personal data that uh, you provide in the questionnaire for uh, co contacting you uh, at the end of this process. And we ask you to confirm that you accept the, 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 the data protection statements, which is something that can be done here on the spot. And the same for the technical data, where we explain that the data that we will be collecting through the questionnaire will be used for the further uh, evaluation of the uh, applications that will be done at a later stage uh, next year. And there again, you are invited to confirm that you accept the technical data policy. I should mention here that on this uh, first page of the, the, the questionnaire that you will find in all the other tabs, incidentally, you have a side uh, menu where you have some additional background documents that are very useful. Uh, for instance, you have the data protection statements, the data policy documents, and a user guide that uh, provides you with some, uh, some information on how to fill in the questionnaire, as well as the different, different additional information on contacts, and uh, where you can also download the PDF version of the questionnaire. I will come back to the first uh, item here, codes and IDs, when we will fill in the, the part on the eligibility. So maybe uh, before I move straight to the next uh, step, which is the eligibility per se, I can pause for a minute and see if there are already some questions. I need to go back to my screen. Uh, yes, thanks. And Philippe, we do have a few questions already. Um, I will start with the first question. Uh, asked about the expression of interest, do you have on page seven, do you have to mention here the power plants under the EU ETS scheme are not taken into account? So we are jumping already in uh, yes. the part of the, so I would prefer that we take that question when we-, we Okay, we'll hold that one, great. I think this one might be uh, appropriate. Um, is this expression of interest part of a group of cities? That question around, are, is this something you encourage that cities go together with partner cities in the area or in a country? Well, I mean, this, this is typically also a question that we can answer later because we, when we move to the eligibility and the additional information, but I can already right. reply to that question. There is the possibility for a group of cities to, to, to come together and uh, apply to the call for social interest. As you will see from the questions that we have in the questionnaire, uh, there is this possibility to do so. We are not specifically encouraging it in a sense that we would like to discourage more, more practically the grouping of cities that are just there for uh, reaching the critical mass or the critical number of inhabitants and become uh, basically eligible. So that would be the wrong reason for grouping cities and applying to this, uh, to this call for expression of interest. What we allow on the other hand, are grouping of cities where it does make sense. That means two cities that are uh, closely uh, located or that are near to each other and that shares, for instance, uh, the same, uh, same provisions on a number of aspects. I'm, I'm thinking aloud loud, for instance, uh, mobility uh, programs and uh, infrastructures that are shared between the two, two, two cities that are uh, side by side. So in that case, I mean, we could, uh, we could consider indeed grouping of cities. 
Uh, what needs to be stressed is that uh, while applying as a group, uh, the cities will still have to fill in the questionnaire uh, individually. Uh, the only difference will be for them to specify when filling in the questionnaire, and I will come to that uh, later on in the, in the description of the questionnaire, that they are coming as a group, but they will still have to provide the, the information for their, their, their city uh, per se, with all the, 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 by filling in all the different tabs in the, in the questionnaire. Thank you. I am looking to see if any of the questions are specific to the sections we've you've discussed so far. People are excited at the prospects of going further in the description of the questionnaire. Yes. So I think there are quite many questions on the eligibility of the, the, the cities per se. So uh, maybe we can move to the, yep. to the next. Let's, let's move on with these questions and we'll hold on to them until we get to the right part. So the anxiety is there. Eligibility, let's move to eligibility. So I was in my uh, questionnaire. Uh, I click next and then I move to el the eligibility tab. And there I have to select uh, where I am from. So if my city is located in a new country, country associated or another non-new country, it goes without saying that if you are selecting another non-new country, then I think you, you will have to go back to the, the statement that uh, is present in the welcome address and consider seriously whether or not you need to complete that, uh, that questionnaire at all. Uh, so in, in for every question, you have a little question mark, which provides us with some additional text, explanatory text. And uh, you will find that uh, this uh, usually helps you understand better the, what is expected of you in the, uh, in the questionnaire. So I, I, as I said, I'm going to take an example here. Uh, I'm going to pretend that I am uh, representing uh, actually my birth town in France. So this is a, France being an EU country, I will select uh, EU country. Uh, then I have to select the country in which of my city is located. As I said, I will take it as an example. I'm not filling it in. I'm just using it as an example. So I will say France. Uh, I will provide the official name of my city in English, so which happens to be Reims. For those of you that uh, know Champagne, you will know Reims. Uh, and then I will have to indicate uh, whether what type of administrative unit uh, uh, is my city according to Eurostat. And here, when you click on the question mark, you have the link to, to Eurostat that is there, which you can also access through the codes and IDs that are there. So if you click on the web link, and I hope that everything works. There you have the definitions that, uh, that you, you have for the different uh, description of cities that have been mentioned. So for instance, you have greater cities, you have uh, cities, you have metropolitan regions. If you uh, click on cities, you will have the definition that will come to, to live as well. I can see it in this page here. I'll just go back to the, to the questionnaire. So I type local administrative unit. And there you are asked, uh, but there you, you have a, a list, whether it's a city, a greater city, a functional urban area, metropolitan region. If you don't know, or if you are in any doubt, I think there is no harm, and it's not that I think, I, I tell you there is no harm in saying not applicable. I think we, what we want to avoid at all costs is people uh, applying and trying to, to guess what uh, type of administrative unit they are. If you, have, if you are in any doubt, then you just click not applicable and uh, it, is, it, is, it will not be used against you. Same goes with the, the, the ID, the code that uh, you will be asked here to provide and that uh, responds to the type, the typology of administrative unit that you have selected. There you have the, uh, the, 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 the codes that are available here. And if you click on the link, you open an Excel table. So you have this type of document that, uh, that you have with the introduction and the definitions. And again, if I take the example of my own town, I go to France and I have the list of cities in France. The only thing I need to do is just type the name of my city and hopefully I will be able to find it. And I, you can see that there are more than one uh, references for Reims. So I select Reims. And here I have the famous code 
for the local administrative unit that I will have to report back in the questionnaire. So when I go back to the questionnaire, I just type here 51. Uh, 454, and that's basically what is expected of you. Again, if you don't know which code to use and uh, where to find it, no panic, there is no problem. This is something that uh, will help us if you provide it uh, in the questionnaire, but we can live without as well. Uh, so then you have to specify the number of inhabitants in the cities. So there again, uh, I, I use the example of my hometown. So, I mean, I know that there is about 184,000 inhabitants and I just specify which uh, year does the figure of po the population refer to. And in the case of this city, it's 2015. So you see it's quite straightforward. And comes the commitment. So that's actually the first document that uh, you will be invited to upload in the, in the questionnaire. First of all, you have to confirm that you uh, that you you have the the intention to join the city's mission, ambition to reach climate neutrality by 2030. So you need to confirm, and you need to upload a document uh, that will be supporting the city's intention to join the mission. So this type of document can be prepared uh, and uh, uploaded in your own native language. And as I said in the introduction, we would be grateful if you could provide us with a courtesy translation in English of that document. So I think uh, from that perspective, uh, on the eligibility, that's all I wanted to, to go through. If we have any question, I'm happy to, to take them on that at that point, and then we can move on to the additional information tab. Okay, we had one question about uh, what the um, French metropoles, communities, events, uh, communes are eligible. Yeah, they are eligible. They can go under metropolitan region. Uh, they can, depending on how they they they, they are qualified, uh, they they could very well go under uh, greater city. Or functional urban area, depending on, uh, on, on the, uh, how they, they, they present themselves. Again, if there is any doubt, uh, they, they can very well specify not applicable and uh, provide additional information uh, later on in the questionnaire. Great. I mean, I think what we want to say when you in, in this questionnaire with these questions is that we welcome everyone, providing there are some boundary conditions that are met. And uh, the first boundary condition is on the size uh, of, the, of the, the population. And that's the explanatory text that we have under the number of inhabitants here. You know by now the, the rules that we, wanted to, that we want to have for the eligibility of cities. Basically, we take cities uh, with a population higher than 50,000 inhabitants. We, we welcome the participation of cities above 100,000 inhabitants. Why do we do that? Why do we do this category? I think someone has a microphone on. Um, because we want to have an impact. So basically, if we attract the interest of a large number of cities with a size higher than 100,000 inhabitants, at the end, we will collect uh, a large group of uh, European citizens uh, involved in the mission. And that will basically provide us with impact, the necessary impact that we expect for, from the mission. But strictly speaking, the, the boundary condition is 50,000 inhabitants for the cities to apply. But we provide an exception for those countries that have a small number of uh, cities higher than 50,000 inhabitants. And this, these countries are actually listed in the, in the explanatory text in the, in the questionnaire. We are talking about Croatia, Cyprus, Estonia, Ireland, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Slovenia, and Slovakia. The text is there. So for those countries, we would allow cities with a population higher than 10,000 inhabitants to apply as well.
I don't know if there are more questions on that uh, part of the questionnaire. Uh, there is, a, there is, a, I can see I'm looking at the, the, the questions myself. There, is there a template for the letter of engagement? We will not provide a template. That would not be appropriate for us to provide you with a template. Having said that, I'm sure that uh, in some countries, uh, some national authorities that are uh, closely involved in the preparation of uh, the or the participation of their cities in the, the city's mission might be able to provide you with some kind of uh, uh, template or some guidance as regard the type of in, uh, document could be prepared uh, and signed by the, the responsible of the, the, the local authorities and uh, can be therefore submitted and um, uploaded in the, the questionnaire. So it's not up to us uh, in the mission to provide with a model letter, but uh, it's something that might actually be done at national level or um, uh, through other channels or networks that, uh, that might feel the, an interest from their participants or from their constituency to, to have this type of template. Great. Philippe, I think we have a specific question on eligibility. Um, from Kazani Greece um, talking about this, there are uh, potentially two different ways that this uh, city is categorized. One is a, an LAU with a population of 42,600. Another is um, a, the municipality as a single administrative unit that includes uh, some sub uh, um, sub units, I guess, with simple way to say it, with a larger population. So I think the question was there, what should be the right way to define the LAU code? Okay, I mean, I can see that it is a very specific question. So, I mean, what I would suggest is we will, uh, we will reply uh, specifically to that question right. to, to, to the participant, because on top of my uh, head here, I'm not sure I would be able to provide the, uh, the, the right answer, but it's certainly something that uh, we will look at and uh, help the, the, the potential applicants. Perfect. We'll, we'll take this offline, Ioannis, and, and follow up in a, in a more specific way for you. OK. All right. I see quite a few around commitment. Yes. Um, declaration of commitment, et cetera. So maybe let's keep moving on, Philippe. So I go to the next tab? Yes. So moving, I hope you can still see my screen. So we are moving to, to the second tab of the questionnaire, which is on additional information, which I remind you is still a section that is mandatory for the, the applicants to, to fill in. And uh, here you have to define the to, to define the land area within the administrative boundaries uh, that uh, that you, you you cover. So I think uh, again I'm going to take the the practical example of my hometown. Uh, I actually checked this morning what was the super the the, the, the area the land area of the the, the city and it happens to be 46.9 square kilometers. So this is my answer. Uh, I think the next question is a little bit more interesting, is to specify the geographical boundary that corresponds to the city's 2030 climate neutrality target. And here we have a drop down menu. So you can say well, this is actually the same as the city administrative boundary. So we take the whole geographical area of the, of the city that is being defined or we take a, an area that is smaller than the city administrative boundary, that means that you have the possibility to actually exclude some zones and some areas or districts from the, the application. And that goes to, the, to explain also uh, some of the questions to provide some already answers to some of the questions that we have received. You can apply as city X, but say that for the purpose of the mission, the area that you want to consider is actually smaller than the, the, the area of your, of your city because you are excluding some zones that you will provide an information on and you will explain why you want to exclude some zones. You can have also the possibility to have larger than the city's administrative boundaries um, uh, surface areas that is already larger. 
also larger than the city administrative boundary. And if you have any doubt or if you have not decided yet uh, what will be the, uh, the effective area that you want to, to cover for the mission when you apply for your cities, you just say not yet decided. So it's still, it's still possible at this stage to reply not yet decided. And, uh, and then this is something that you will do at a later stage uh, in the, the context of the implementation of the mission. So of course, if you say not yet decided, you have to elaborate further, further why you, you have not decided. And, uh, and the same goes if you say smaller, you will have to provide some explanation on the, 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 the type of uh, and size of the areas that you want to exclude and why you want to exclude them. So this is where, for instance, you will be able to explain that uh, you are committed to the objective of climate neutrality by 2030 for a specific area or zone in, in your city, but you want to exclude some parts because they are pro producing, for instance, greenhouse gas emissions that cannot be mitigated uh, significantly by the horizon of 2030, but you have a strategy to include these uh, emission sources and these, uh, these areas uh, in a strategy that goes beyond 2030 and that is certainly before 2050. So that's how you can, uh, you can present your application in the, in the questionnaire. So you will have the opportunity here to provide the information why you want to exclude some, uh, some sub areas or some districts from, uh, from the, the application, the, the call for expression of interest for your city. So uh, if I can move to the, the additional information here. Uh, so I, I would say here, you will have to, you are more than uh, invited to re respond yes, but you can have some exclusions. Uh, of course, if you, if you consider that there are some, some sectors that you want to exclude, uh, then you will have to, to, to provide information. Uh, and here comes the question on whether or not you are part of a grouping of cities or not. So if you say yes, it's likely, yes, you will be asked to provide information on the group of cities uh, that are part of this grouping that, uh, that will be submitted and which city will be actually the coordinate, coordinating entity in the grouping of cities. If you reply no, then there is no, there is no such question and you will be just asked to, to select the language that will be used for the upload of the documents, the, the uploaded documents that you will be provide that you will provide in the questionnaire. And here you have uh, all the languages of the EU that are uh, possible to, to select. The last part on the additional information is basically the contact person that will, uh, will be the responsible for the application that you submit. And this will be the person that uh, will be contacted for any follow-up activities after the uh, submission of the call for extra of interest. So I think that's all we, we, we have here uh, for under this uh, tab on, for additional information. And I can take more questions from the, the participants. All right, we, have some, we definitely have some emission related questions. And I think Nadia, you may even have um, an answer here. Do you mention that power plants under the EU ETS scheme are not, uh, are not taken into account? Um, I'm going to invite Nadia, if you want to speak to this, I know you've written up a note, I'll capture that in the answer as well. But you might want to speak to that because we have a couple of these related to the EU ETS uh, installations. Yes, uh, with pleasure. We will cover it so when uh, talking about the other parts of the questionnaire but uh, in principle um, what um, the climate neutrality definition that applies for the mission forces is that ETS plants are exempt uh, from the target um, basically because uh, many municip municipalities don't have really influence uh, over the plants that's also the practice uh, that is followed by the um, European Covenant of Mayors also, if a city um, wishes to address emissions from an ETS plant, it is most welcome to include it uh, in the target. It is not necessary to specify it as in 
ex exclusion uh, at the beginning of the questionnaire in the first two tabs that uh, Philippe just showed, simply because they're exempt by default. Um, and then we will come to the specificities of um, how to present uh, emissions from ETS plants, I think, when we go to the uh, respective part of the questionnaire, if that's agreeable. Thank you. Just checking through questions. I see the question on legal representative or contact person. Yes, in the, in the questionnaire we mentioned legal representative, but uh, the, this will be the person that will be for us the contact person. Yeah. Current policies. We have one for the next section for that section. Um, additional information. Well, this goes back to the previous. If the questionnaire uh, and the, that you illustrated, uh, Philippe, there's a point, there is the point, if the boundary is larger than the city administrative boundary, could you please explain what is meant by this? Well, maybe I will uh, ask Nadia to, 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 to explain that because this is something that we've been discussing yesterday, incidentally. I'm really sorry. I was just reading the other questions. No <laughs> Do problem. you mind repeating? <laughs> if, if, if there is the point, if the boundary is larger than the city administrative boundary, could you please explain what is meant? Um, this could be the case um, if the city um, has an adjacent area and uh, a collaboration with a with a neighboring community and um, there are specific um, cross boundary projects that they feel could be included so the boundary could be larger and uh, include uh, neighboring uh, territories given that there is a collaboration uh, with the other administrative uh, unit that that covers this uh, territory great thank you hopefully that helps to answer that I see a question on the, the grouping of cities, whether or not we have some a priori uh, as regard the, the evaluation and the, the handling of these, uh, these applications. No, we don't yes. have a priori any position. So I would say uh, the, answer is, uh, the answer would be neutral. Uh, the only thing we, we want to avoid at all cost, as I said, is an artificial grouping of cities just to fulfill the eligibility condition. Because that would be wrong, or a network of small cities that are, for instance, at national level, that uh, that do not share anything but just their application to the the call for expression of interest, and that that would be that would be typically something that we would like to exclude from the the call for expression of interest. But yes. on the, on otherwise, I mean, if you have adjacent cities that come that want to to join up and uh, share already quite a number of uh, issues. Uh, and uh, facilities, uh, there, there is no problem in having them submitting their application as a grouping of cities. I think related to this, and, and you spoke to this briefly a little bit, but maybe let's clear this up because another question came in. If a region coordinates an expression of interest with several cities, does the region have to fill in the questionnaire or only the cities? Well, if it is a metropolitan region, then that's the, that's the metropolitan region that fills in the questionnaire. Uh, if it is for a grouping of cities, as, as we said uh, before, then we have to ask the cities individually to fill in the questionnaire and to mention that they are part of a grouping. Yes. So there, I think we distinguish a metropolitan uh, region yeah. versus a larger region with several cities. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I wonder, Philip, maybe we go to the next section. I'm happy to do that. Uh, I'm uh, happy also to have completed the application for my own town. So, uh, <laughs> so they probably do not know yet they are part of the city mission. So maybe we should inform them at some stage. 
And uh, if we move to the next tab, then uh, I will actually give the, the floor to uh, my colleague Nadia that will present to you this uh, tab on current level of emissions. Nadia, the floor. Great, thank you. And we'll keep working on questions that we can answer in the meantime, if people are following in the Q&A. So do you share your screen, Nadia? Yes, I'm in the process. I hope now you can see my screen. It shouldn't yes. be different yes. from what you saw before. <laughs> So uh, many thanks indeed. Um, my name is Nadia Fetters. I work for the Energy Efficiency uh, and Renewables Unit of the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. And indeed, it's my pleasure now to walk you through two other uh, tabs of this uh, questionnaire this uh, afternoon to review um, each of the questions one by one and to provide some additional information or background as needed. Uh, we will do it hands-on just like uh, Philippe did for the first uh, two parts um, directly at the EU survey um, and as this is the first webinar and I saw also there were some technical questions already in the chat um, I will also cover um, on the way some do's and don'ts of how to work uh, with this survey to make sure that indeed uh, this is a, a satisfactory experience for you and uh, none of your valuable contributions are lost uh, in the process. Uh, many of you have probably registered and have uh, seen this questionnaire. For those of you who, who will do so immediately after this questionnaire, that's what, uh, after this webinar, I wanted to say, uh, that's what it looks like. Um, we have several tabs uh, on top. Um, you can move between uh, them freely. Um, whatever information you have entered in one of the tabs uh, will remain, so there is no necessity to uh, complete one tab before you move ahead. It is also um, very uh, encouraged and possible uh, to share the link uh, among uh, different people in the administration that are uh, contributing to filling uh, the questionnaire. Uh, it's one and the same link um, that you can use. What is um, strongly recommended in this case, however, is that uh, you do work on the questionnaire in uh, sequences, not at the same time. There are some technical uh, reasons to that. Uh, so please, if there are several people sharing uh, the link that uh, the personalized link that the city receives after registering, uh, try to agree on uh, a sequence of uh, when uh, each of you is contributing and, and working on the questionnaire. Um, also, um, what is really important, so let's cover this right in the beginning, is that you, and I believe, sorry, I need to, so you see the full screen, minimize this, uh, that you uh, save a draft uh, of the uh, questionnaire um, as soon as possible, uh, as often as possible, frequently. Um, let me do that. If you click on save um, as a draft, uh, you come to this page uh, and you get here a link that takes you back uh, to the survey. There is no need to note this link down uh, because it's the same uh, that has been provided to you, the personalized uh, link that you received by email after registering. If you go back, if you want to go back, you can do so immediately just by clicking on it again or you start um, a different uh, session. What I wanted to say is that, um, as you can see here, it may take a while for the whole uh, survey to load up again, uh, specifically the, the later tab. So don't be alarmed, this is uh, normal. Uh, the loading times can increase when uh, more people are working on the uh, survey simultaneously. Um, so it will load, it can, up to one, can take up to one, two uh, minutes. Um, I think, yeah, uh, Philippe already mentioned the user guide, so you can uh, look up the uh, technicalities um, at any point or contact us, uh, of course, if you have any questions with the contact form or, or the specified um, email address. Now, um, let's go to the tab um, for, uh, climate new for your ambition for climate neutrality. While this is loading, <laughs> hopefully it will do so fast. Um, we have taken the decision to not exactly follow the sequence of the questionnaire in today's webinar and to start with this tab, um, specifically the questions that relate to your city's uh, vision and ambition, as this links very well to the sections of the questionnaire that uh, were just covered by Philippe. Um, and then for the rest of today and in the other webinars, we will stick to the order of the questionnaire. 
This part of the questionnaire is the only one that is forward-looking and which refers um, really much more to your city's vision than to any uh, concrete plans. Um, as it is very well understood that many cities that will express their interest to join the mission are um, at the very early stage of determining this vision on becoming climate neutral and that so far no detailed analysis or planning will have been undertaken regarding how to really reach climate neutrality by uh, 2030. Mm -hmm. So, this has not loaded um, yet. I'm trying. I can share my screen if you prefer, Nadia. No, it should, it should, um, it should come. <laughs> so, this is a live demonstration indeed. Yeah, it will, uh, it will take a while um, to get there. Um, but, we will soon be we will soon be there um, the first question um, in this uh, section and i'll read it now uh, to you um, before it's being displayed is please describe your city's vision on how it will achieve climate neutrality by 2030 meaning how the city plans to accelerate the transition and close the gap to zero or net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. so this first question in this section um, is like the vision if you want the pitch of your city um, we do suggest a structure for providing this vision that covers first of all um, the overall vision and motivation for joining the mission secondly um, how you see the transition of the main emitting sectors happening and thirdly um, we also uh, invite you to uh, cover horizontal topics uh, which could touch upon climate governance or, or citizen engagement or any cross-cutting enablers like it is the smart and digital trans transition for example in this context this is left deliberately open as each city should have the space um, to reflect on its specific situation the role of the city's mission and how the city um, really aspires to reach climate neutrality within the next uh, nine years so finally we made it also here in the um, questionnaire so we uh, covered uh, this first uh, tab as uh, this first question as Philippe uh, was mentioning uh, already you have this little question mark icons here that um, you can find for most of the questions uh, in the questionnaire they will provide you additional guidance or useful uh, definitions that help in, in answering uh, the respective um, question We then um, move on in this section uh, to ask a few questions on your city's uh, ambition, uh, basically details on the target uh, that um, um, the city has for, for 2030, with the intention to understand the city's ambition and the aspiration that the city wants to work towards as part of the city's mission. What is really important to highlight here, I think, before we go through this block of questions, is that uh, the answers provided here um, do not assume or do not require that these targets have been officially adopted or that these intentions have been previously declared elsewhere, but in the context of this expression of interest. So this is really uh, forward-looking, the aspiration of the city, nothing that has been um, well adopted or set in stone if it has been uh, that's excellent if not uh, that's where most of the cities will find themselves so um, if we select um, if we go back to this um, question um, is your city aiming at climate neutrality by reaching absolute zero or net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 again you will find here uh, the definitions um, of what we mean with these terms So we are asking you to indicate uh, whether the city aims for achieving absolute zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 as compared to net zero greenhouse gas emissions or whether this, has still be de to, this will be determined in the next phase of the mission with the support that will be made available, for example, through the mission platform. Net zero greenhouse gas emissions in this context would mean that there are still emissions occurring in 2030, but uh, that this, these so-called residual emissions are um, fully cancelled out by negative emissions achieved through natural or uh, technical carbon sinks or through carbon credits. We'll get back to this terminology in a while. 
uh, in one of the next uh, questions. Reaching absolute zero greenhouse gas emissions would mean that in 2030 the city really no longer emits or causes any greenhouse gases, neither directly through the combustion of fossil fuels or um, nor indirectly through the consumption of grid supplied energy in those sectors and scopes that are covered by the climate neutrality definition of the emission. Also to those terms, we will come back shortly um, when we cover the questions on the, on the current emissions. Um, what uh, I would like to highlight here is that both absolute zero and net zero greenhouse gas emissions are fully in line with the definition of climate neutrality applied for the city's mission. You can look up further details about this, these definitions and uh, consult the info kit um, where um, the links to, like Philippe presented uh, in the beginning, the links where you can find it if you have not um, consulted the info kit so far. Um, the definition, in short, is that uh, achieving climate neutrality will require a mission city to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from all sectors and sources within the city's boundary to net zero by 2030. The level of these residual emissions uh, should be as low as possible and be limited to uh, emissions that are impossible to fully eliminate by 2030. And this will depend, of course, on the situation of each individual city. But as a guideline, it should not exceed 20% of the baseline greenhouse gas inventory for the whole targeted geographical area of the city. It is very likely that, um, that many cities expressing their interest might not yet have analyzed their possibilities to that level of detail. And it is indeed not a requirement to have an answer to this question at this point. So if this is the case for your city, you simply choose the answer uh, to be determined in the next phase um, of the mission. And that's an, a, a, a valid answer at this point. Mm. Um, if you have, however, um, advanced with the thinking on your city's emission reduction potential, then we would like to know. Um, so the next two questions um, go hand in hand, asking first um, about the estimated magnitude of residual emissions, meaning uh, the share. Um, and I'm sorry, I should. So <laughs> click here, so they are actually uh, displayed. Uh, so. So we will be first asking about the, the share of emissions that still will be uh, present in 2030 and in which sectors your city believes it will be impossible or, or disproportionately costly to bring all emissions to zero in this time frame. Um, so in this question um, that I'm just uh, speaking about, um, you may wonder what should be the baseline year for this uh, estimation, meaning, for example, 10% of the emissions level in which year? Uh, the answer here would be that whatever baseline year you have used in your analysis, like ideally it would correspond to the emissions inventory that you will indicate in the tab on current emi emissions, and we will speak about uh, this shortly. But we deliberately left this open and do not ask for any more details here as we really don't expect any robust figures at this point. But this is really an indication and estimation of what you think is possible in your city. Also, nobody will hold um, like any figures. You muted, this will uh, be undertaken. Oh, there you go. Now you're back. Oh, I'm sorry. Just cut out for a second. So maybe just repeat the last 10 seconds. Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, what I was saying is that um, any figure here provided uh, won't be hold, uh, a, a won't be held against uh, a city later in the phases of the mission when a more detailed analysis uh, will be undertaken and and figures. Uh, uh, crystallize. Also, this is not an accounting exercise, uh, obviously. So, um, also here it is very much possible that uh, while your city believes that there will be some residual emissions in 2030, that the level of those emissions is unclear at the moment, meaning it will be determined in the next phase of the mission. And again, um, that's a perfectly uh, valid answer to provide. Um, what you may, however, know um, already is where, uh, meaning in which sectors it will be impossible or very difficult for your city to bring emissions to zero by 2030. For example, due to, 
to specific technological uh, constraints. Um, if this is the case, uh, please indicate then in this question um, in which sectors you expect to still have residual emissions uh, that cannot be fully abated by 2030. That could be a specific uh, industrial process where the technologies for decarbonization are not yet uh, mature enough or um, any other um, city-specific uh, circumstances. Um, this is valuable information so uh, to the mission in view of preparing the next phases, um, the support package that will be brought forward for cities and, and the interventions to support uh, mission implementation. So please do, do specify your thinking, even if this is um, not at the moment based on, on a very detailed analysis. Um, then there is one last question in this section uh, that deals with uh, residual emissions uh, and that's uh, um, about your city's vision on how you uh, aim to address uh, any remaining residual emissions by uh, 2030. So we are um, moved to this question. Um, the background here um, is that uh, for a mission city to arrive at net zero uh, in the situation when residual emissions are still present in 2030, any residual emissions will have to be compensated through carbon removals, um, preferably within the city boundary uh, through nature-based or, or industrial removals or through carbon credits. In any event, um, all carbon removals um, should be robust and of high quality and quality and this will have to be certified also, here you can find further uh, information on these possibilities for addressing residual emissions in the in the info kit, in the second part of the info kit. But if your city already has an idea or even concrete ways in your mind of how to address possible residual emissions, um, this is the place then uh, to outline these plans. And then um, one last question that I will cover uh, today on this um, uh, tab is um, for the very ambitious cities <laughs> among you, as here we would like to know if there are cities who aim at reaching climate neutrality um, even before 2030, even earlier. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no expectation in this regard. 2030, I think we, we all agree on this, is, is challenge enough. But uh, again, if there are cities who have an earlier date in mind, we would like to know. So please uh, use this um, question to, to specify. If you say yes, then uh, we'd like to know which year uh, that would be. Um, I'll finish uh, for today uh, with this uh, tab. We will tackle the remaining part um, of this tab uh, five in the next um, uh, webinar together with the uh, current policies as these two sections mirror each other, once uh, looking at the current situation and once at uh, those uh, vision, the vision and the ambitions for, for closing the gap. I'd move to uh, current emissions um, or we, we break for for questions. Um, I believe so that many uh, of the things that, that came up um, might be answered while, while going through this tab, but um, let me know what's the preferred way on how to proceed. Let's take a couple of questions that I think are still lingering, just to be precise and thorough in responding, um, Nadia. One is um, about uh, can we use non-EU credits to reach carbon neutrality, decentralized cooperation policy? Um, non-EU credits, um, there are no rules specified uh, at this uh, moment, but uh, there is um, um, a certification regulation uh, to be proposed by the Commission uh, next year. And I think the um, regulatory framework will probably uh, tighten and the policies in this regard as well. So we do highly encourage um, in city um, uh, projects where credits are used um, preferably um, as close to home uh, as possible um, indeed within the European Union uh, but if there are very compelling reasons for using non-EU uh, credits um, I think this can be considered again uh, with the um, um, given that uh, these credits are robust and have been certified uh, in a way that uh, is recognized uh, within the European Union. 
and preferably these are um, credits that do have um, a high uh, level of additionality and, um, and it co-benefits in the social environmental sphere. This is also summarized in, in the InfoKit, the current um, right. recommendations. Right, thank you. Um, I think this has also been um, spoken to a bit, but just to make sure everybody's clear, there's another question around energy generation sector. Is the energy production within the boundary of the city or outside? And I, I believe you you um, can speak to that as it relates to the form. The yes, I was planning to to uh, tackle that in, in more detail uh, when speaking about the current emissions uh, tab, but yep. um, I think we have to distinguish um, two things. The first is um, what we are asking now in this questionnaire, uh, and this is um, basically capturing whatever the city has been done, uh, has been doing so far in, in uh, accounting uh, emissions but for mission cities then uh, we have a recommendation that uh, energy generation is uh, accounted not uh, directly but as indirect emissions through the consumption of grid supplied uh, electricity and heat and cold that takes place uh, in the city boundaries so irrespective of where the generation takes place as this shifts really the attention to the end use efficiency and away from from the energy generation as such but I will get, uh, I'll, I'll uh, say a few more things on this uh, when we cover the current emission step. We have a few things around ambition and the commitment. And uh, this may be uh, bringing uh, Philippe as well into this, but I I'm just gonna pick up a few of these because um, I think it's good to be clear. Um, one, th there are a few around who should be the representative um, around this commitment, need it be the mayor or the president of the uh, Metropole, for example, I think they're, they're seeking a little bit of specificity here on who can speak to this and be the, the effective uh, representative of the city in responding to this from a commitment perspective. I think this is indeed a question for Philippe. Yes. Yes, well, uh, I think we are talking about legal representatives, so we would expect someone that actually can speak uh, uh, for the, the the city or the, the, the administrative unit that is uh, submitting the application. So if it is the mayor, so much uh, the better, but it could be uh, uh, an entity or a per person that is mandated by, uh, by the mayor or uh, an authoritative body. Uh, coming back to the commitment, I think I like to reassure the potential applicants you are not submitting your climate city contract you are submitting an you are responding to a call for expression of interest and what we ask you to commit is on your ambition to uh, to 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 fulfill the objective of the mission so i'm, I'm just I'd like to go back actually to the text that we have when we are referring to this commitment is Please confirm your city's intention to join the city's mission with the ambition to reach climate neutrality by 2030. So we are not asking you to submit, as I said, your climate city contract. This is something that will come uh, uh, later. What we want you to commit to is the objective of the mission, saying that we are we 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 are committed to this process that that will lead to eventually climate neutrality with specific conditions which could be the entirety of the, the area of the, the, the city. It could be a sub part of the, of the city. You have to take into account that you, you, you need not even in the call for social interest specify that or at that, that stage, because you can leave it open saying that we have to analyze that further in order to identify the exact area that we want to commit to the, to, 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 to the, the, the city's mission. Same way with the, the offsetting that uh, was presented by Nadia. I mean, if you don't know uh, at this stage what is the level of offsetting that you, you will want to apply, well, th this is fine. So you, 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 you need not have answers to all the questions that we put to you. Uh, but you still need to get from the, 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 the legal representative uh, of your city a commitment on the ambition of the, of the, of the mission. So, you are committing to a process. You are not committing yet to the result. Uh, 
Thomas, you're on mute. Thank you, Nadia. Um, I'm not sure I'm seeing any more just now on um, ambition and climate neutrality. Maybe, Nadia, do you want to carry on? Uh, yes, with pleasure. So we'll move now. We have covered um, eligibility and additional information uh, before. Um, and now we move uh, to the current uh, emissions. So um, we ask here, has an inventory of greenhouse gas emissions been undertaken for your city since uh, 2005? And indeed, um, if you say no, um, that's it. <laughs> this section um, is done. Same for if it's under preparation. Uh, however, if there is an inventory uh, of greenhouse gas emissions available for your city, um, there are a few more uh, questions um, that we invite you to answer. Um, there are a few, several. Uh, there are several things uh, I think that are worth uh, noting here. Um, the most important is. Uh, no here again is a good answer um, if there has no uh, inventory of uh, greenhouse gas emissions been undertaken in your city so far it is not expected uh, that you undertake one to be able to respond to this call that would also not be realistically <laughs> um, feasible um, in this time frame um, not having an inventory at this stage or or not being able to provide concrete figures in this type is, um, as Philippe also just stressed, really not an excluding criterion. We simply want to know where the city stands. Um, and if the answer is no, we know that the city will likely need assistance in undertaking a comprehensive citywide inventory of all emissions in the next phase of the mission. The second important point for um, completing this uh, tab here is that cities are not expected um, to have completed a comprehensive greenhouse gas emissions inventory for all the sectors and scopes covered by the uh, city's mission. What we describe in the info kit is what is recommended uh, for, for city's mission. Um, we don't think that uh, cities have necessarily followed these practices uh, in the past. So in this step, you are invited to share information from inventories uh, previously undertaken, irrespective of the scope or methodology um, applied for the different parts of the inventory. We are um, very much aware that cities may have followed different protocols so far and that not all the sectors um, that fall uh, within the uh, mission target may have been included at that time. This is not the problem. Um, we are aware that the inventories that um, you refer to um, won't be fully comparable across cities. And this is why we ask you a number of additional questions below um, and we will, um, we will cover those. Um, really to understand um, what you have been doing so far. So there is no need to, to tweak <laughs> things. This is um, looking at what you have been, uh, your practices uh, in the past. If you would like to have further information of what is suggested for the mission cities, um, it's uh, specified in more detail um, in the info kit um, in, the, in the second part. Uh, but again, this is for the next phase. Here now in this questionnaire, please provide what you have, whether complete or not, whether the same approaches were followed or not. Any information is valuable at this point, as it will help better understand where the city stands, um, really um, what, what protocol cities are following at the moment, but also um, to better understand um, the, the greenhouse gas emission reduction effort that is uh, needed in the different cities expressing their interest. Um, if there are several inventories in, uh, available uh, for uh, your city, please uh, choose the, the most complete and the most recent inventory. And uh, most complete uh, in this context would mean uh, the inventory that uh, does cover most of the sectors, scopes and gases as suggested for mission cities uh, in the info kit. And finally, um, the cut of date mentioned here, meaning the year 2005, uh, refers to when the inventory was undertaken, uh, not the accounting year. Uh, this is covered by another question below. So um, if your city um, has an inventory, then uh, there is this um, series of questions that we would like you uh, to fill in. The first one um, to indicate the total greenhouse gas emissions that result uh, from the inventory in question. Um, 
The figure uh, should be provided in absolute terms, so not as per capita value, and in metric ton CO2 equivalent. Um, this is usually available um, as a result of the inventory, but uh, it can be determined by multiplying each gas by its respective global warming potential factor. What is important is that you follow these indications of on the units of measurement. Um, you can find them always in the help uh, text to ensure that we interpret the figures in the right way. Because in the box itself, um, you can only introduce uh, numbers and uh, a dot for a digit. Um, if you put something else there, you try to specify that this is per capita. Um, it should not be allowed, yeah. So <laughs> you cannot tell me here, um, like we, I cannot enter here um, any additional information. So please do follow the um, units of measurement uh, that are indicated um, here in the in the help text. Then, um, indeed, um, I wanted to spend uh, a moment to speak about emissions uh, from, from energy generation and uh, I saw uh, several questions on this uh, came up. If energy generation takes place within the administrative boundary of the um, city and it is then supplied to the grid uh, for emission cities, we do recommend that these emissions are covered as indirect emissions. That means really by accounting emissions that occur due to due to the consumption of this grid supplied energy, whether that's electricity or, or heat uh, or coal from district heating installations. These um, indirect emissions um, are often referred to as scope 2 emissions, um, the most commonly used greenhouse gas inventory protocols. But it is also good practice to measure the direct emissions due to the energy generation that occurs uh, within the city boundary. But um, if those are captured as indirect emissions from consumption of grid supplied energy, they should not be included in the emissions total of the city because otherwise we'd be uh, double counting. Um, this is also explained in more detail in the second part of the info kit, so you can refer uh, there uh, for more details. But having said this, um, for the purpose of filling this questionnaire, you don't need to recalculate your emissions total in case your inventory, for example, followed the territorial approach and therefore included the direct emissions resulting um, uh, from energy um, uh, generation. Uh, we just would uh, need to know so we can interpret the figures correctly. If your inventory covered both, like direct emissions from energy generation in the city and the indirect emissions from energy consumption, uh, then the total indeed should not include the direct emissions. Uh, but there is space further down in this tab um, where uh, you can specify this further and I'll, I'll point it out when we get there. Also, um, so um, I'm, I'm going to the next uh, questions uh, that ask some further details always about the one uh, inventory that you choose to um, use as reference for answering all the questions uh, in this tab. So all the uh, answers should refer to one and the same uh, inventory. The first thing um, that uh, we would like to know is uh, the accounting year and as specified also here in the help text um, is that the accounting year refers to the year to which uh, the collected data corresponds, meaning not the year in which uh, the inventory itself was compiled. Um, there's usually a time lag between uh, the accounting year uh, and the year in which the inventory is done, um, because data only becomes available later. Um, also, um, um, you may wonder um, if and uh, or how to report a baseline emission inventory in case uh, one was done for the city. Uh, this is the practice in the in the Covenant of Mayors, for example. We establish a baseline for the emission reduction targets. In these cases, um, you can have an, in, an accounting year that dates back to, to as early as 1990, but uh, the inventory itself was maybe compiled in, in 2010, for example. So what you should indicate here in this case is the year 1990. However, um, as I said uh, before, if there is a more recent inventory available, preference should be given to the most recent and the most complete, not the uh, baseline emission inventory that might have been um, undertaken uh, for the purpose of uh, baseline setting for emission reduction targets. Then um, the next question, um, 
should be uh, simple. <laughs> Uh, the population in the accounting year, so um, mirroring the accounting year above. Uh, however, um, if there is no accurate figure available because there was no census undertaken in that year or for other reasons, you may uh, use the figure from the closest available year or a simple linear interpolation. Then um, in the next question, uh, you can indicate um, the um, standard or, or the protocol um, that was followed for um, uh, compiling the inventory uh, in uh, question and we have listed a few commonly applied uh, protocols for urban uh, greenhouse gas inventories. Uh, they do um, in general establish which sectors, scopes and gases should be included in an inventory and uh, which uh, methodologies should be used to ensure that the, that the inventory is robust and comparable. Um, we are not, I think we don't need to go in detail because if your city has followed one or the other, um, you will know. But please do indicate uh, if it was none of the listed ones and use the text box then to uh, briefly uh, explain. So um, if you choose other, then please let us know uh, which protocol um, was followed. Then um, in the next question, uh, we are asking you to uh, indicate all the, the sectors or sources of greenhouse gas emissions that were included in this inventory. Um, again, referring to the one inventory referenced in this uh, tab. So you can simply select uh, those that uh, were covered. Um, you can find a detailed description of the sectors in the info kit, uh, but um, as this is the first uh, webinar, uh, maybe I take a few moments to explain what each of them um, entails. So the first sector, this refers to all emissions from the combustion of fossil fuels in all buildings and facilities located in the city. Those uh, would be the, the direct emissions, as well as emissions arising from the consumption of grid supplied electricity and heat or cold. Those would be the indirect emissions. Um, when we speak about buildings, uh, this includes all types of buildings, uh, residential, commercial, um, industrial buildings and facilities, all municipal buildings, and also stationary energy, not to forget, um, it also includes um, uh, public lightning uh, within the city boundary. Um, and just to, um, to specify, maybe for the indirect emissions, um, these emissions, they can indeed uh, physically occur inside or outside uh, the city boundary, depending on where the energy uh, is generated. The second important sector in most of the cities uh, will be transport. Um, this covers emissions from combustion of fossil fuels of, for all vehicles and transport within the city boundary and indirect emissions due to the use of grid supplied electricity <laughs> to, to charge electric vehicles. It covers all modes, um, on-road, off-road, rail, waterborne, navigation, aviation, off-road, everything, uh, all fleet types, meaning municipal fleets, public, private, uh, commercial transport, all falls under this macro sector. Then the next um, sector that is typically, typically uh, covered by a city-wide uh, greenhouse gas inventory is waste and wastewater. Uh, this covers uh, emissions from waste and wastewater generated within the city boundary but irrespective of whether the treatment uh, the, the, the management and the disposal um, of the waste and wastewater takes place so um, whether this is within or outside the city boundary this is where the um, definition of uh, climate neutrality um, that will apply in the uh, mission uh, in the city's mission um, covers scope uh, three, so-called scope three um, emissions that are uh, in all the other sectors um, exempt from the 2030 target. Then um, we have this um, sector with the incredibly uh, long name, um, agriculture, forestry and other uh, land use, short AFOLO, uh, that covers emissions from changes in land use, including agriculture, forestry, uh, and changes in other land uses and land cover within the city boundary. And it also covers uh, non-energy related uh, emissions, 
sorry, this is a bit technical, <laughs> in the digestive processes of livestock. Uh, that's, however, uh, in most cities, I assume, not the most significant source of emissions. And finally, um, the IPPU sector, um, which stands for industrial processes and product use, that refers to non-energy related emissions from industrial processes and the use of certain products uh, like refrigerants and foams and other things, and non-energy use of um, fossil fuels uh, in industry. It's important, I think, to specify that um, any energy related greenhouse gas emissions in industrial facilities uh, are not covered here. They should be covered under, under the stationary energy sector. So um, it's very um, likely that uh, as uh, like AFOLO and, and uh, IPPU, for example, are, are typically not significant sources of emissions in a city that those were not covered in the past by, by uh, city-wide greenhouse gas uh, emissions inventories. Um, and that's um, perfectly fine for this uh, exercise. We will ask uh, just to indicate which are uh, covered. Uh, then the next question should also be pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the one on the um, gases, um, with the exception of the impronounceable names of most of those. So I'll, I'll not attempt <laughs> right now, um, but simply tick please all the uh, gases uh, which are covered. This would be typically um, CO2 and nitrous oxide uh, and uh, methane. If, however, um, the IPPU sector is covered, uh, also the other four gases, um, including the F gases, and uh, I'll skip it, <laughs> should be uh, present. Then, um, in the next question, we would like to understand um, the boundary of the inventory. Um, whether um, it covered your entire city area or maybe just parts of it, like a specific district, or um, maybe the area was, was larger because it was jointly undertaken um, with uh, neighboring areas. Um, if there are multiple uh, inventories available, ideally, please choose the one which covers the entire city territory and, and nothing else <laughs> than the city territory. Um, one specific case that um, I wanted to mention is that um, it may be that uh, an inventory was performed in the past to only cover municipal buildings and operations. This has been done uh, for some cities and if that's the only inventory available, please do provide the figures here, but then you can choose um, the option smaller uh, in, this, in this question. That would be this one. So, then, Nadia, we had yeah. a couple of very specific questions here in the Q&A on this section. Yeah, we can take them right now. <laughs> okay. There were a few more things, um, but we almost reached the end of this um, tab. Why don't, I, you, why don't you finish the tab? We'll come back. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'll go fast. <laughs> no problem. This is not the, the most exciting subject, I'm aware. So, um, we had asked you... Um, like further above in one of the questions um, to indicate the sectors that are covered by your inventory. Um, and then uh, here um, in this question, um, this mirrors basically the question above. We ask you to provide a sector breakdown of the city's current level of uh, emissions if um, available for each of the sectors where you have estimated um, the emissions. So we are looking at this um, table here. Um, what I wanted to say is that uh, please do select yes, even if you cannot provide a full breakdown of all uh, the sectors. It's really sufficient to have a more granular information um, for, for one of the sectors covered uh, by your inventory. So um, you see this additional uh, table and then um, yeah, just for completeness, also here, uh, information should be provided in absolute values, in metric tons uh, CO2 uh, equivalent. Um, if your inventory does not cover one of these sectors, please simply uh, leave the respective cell blank. Um, if your inventory follows a different disaggregation uh, that does not or only 
partially coincide uh, with uh, the sectors listed in the table, then uh, please provide the figures for those sectors which are applicable and the rest you can enter in um, the uh, line uh, labeled other. Um, also, if your inventory only um, covers a part of a specific sector, then please do provide the number as long um, as what is covered is a subset of the sector as it's described here or also in the info kit in more detail. Um, just to give you an example, like um, if um, for waste your inventory covers sector, um, doesn't have to be complete. Then all the lines uh, up to total uh, should add up <laughs> to this total. Um, if um, another example, your inventory uh, covers transport, um, but for all the other sectors, a different aggregation, this aggregation was used, then simply provide uh, the figure for transport sector in the respective line and the rest, uh, meaning the difference between the total emissions and the transport sector emissions is then entered in the line other. And then uh, in the next question, you have uh, the opportunity to specify um, what the figures include, uh, meaning the other. Um, so, sorry, it's uh, this question here. And then uh, there are follow-up questions to this table that again allow you to further specify what you have uh, provided um, above. So, um, uh, one very technical comment just because I see it here. Um, you see here a character limit, uh, 200 characters maximum. Um, I just wanted to say that this does include uh, spaces. <laughs> so if you um, prepare your contributions um, outside the questionnaire, please do count uh, spaces um, before pasting answers back into the questionnaire. Then um, I'll go very fast um, over this um, uh, last uh, table here. Um, again, it refers to this one um, inventory, uh, which you have chosen as a reference for answering the questions. And um, it gives you now the possibility to explain a bit better the breakdown provided in the above question with the figures. Um, so if a cell is left blank in that table um, with the sectoral breakdown, um, then here you can indicate uh, the reason. Uh, cities that have been like reporting in the past uh, to, to my covenant or, or CDB ICLE unified reporting system, they are all familiar with this system. It's the so-called notation keys. Um, but uh, maybe it's easiest uh, also again with, with an example. Um, if you left the cell blank that refers to the IPPU sector, uh, this could be for several reasons. Either there is no industrial um, activity uh, taking place, um, then you simply uh, select not occurring. Or um, the emissions were estimated, but the inventory followed a different disaggregation and therefore you have provided the figure under other. So in this case, you choose uh, the answer here included elsewhere. Another option is that um, industrial activity does industrial activity um, does take place, but uh, it was so far not covered by your city-wide greenhouse gas emissions inventory. So in this case, it is not estimated. And finally, um, it could be that there is just one big industrial facility, and data is therefore not disclosed. So uh, here you should choose should choose a confidential as answer. So. Um, and then um, to conclude this block of questions on the city inventory, uh, you can upload any supporting um, documentation like an inventory uh, summary. This will help the experts that are reviewing the expression of interest to, to double check any information provided or, or seek clarifications if this is needed. But generally, uh, the experts will rely on the information that you provide directly in the questionnaire. So please do make sure that um, the information provided is accurate. Um, now, uh, there is a final uh, question then. Um, 
that um, now wants to understand uh, whether this is a regular exercise uh, that, is your, that your city is undertaking. So we are asking if your city is regularly compiling greenhouse gas emissions um, for its territory. And if so, we'd like to know the, the frequency. Uh, this should be like a backward looking answer. So not what you have planned to do in the future, but what was the practice um, up to date. And then, um, Direct link to this question on the frequency of inventories is a question on uh, trends. Uh, so, if available, we'd like to ask you. Um, we'd like to know how the emissions in your cities have evolved over time in a period that covers at least uh, five years. If this information is available, the longer the trend, the better, of course. Um, this should not be an estimation or, or any like um, uh, modeling of a, of a future trajectory or a scenario, but really a, a past of, um, based on past assessments. Um, you can also indicate um, if this refers to overall or per capita emissions, and if you have the possibility to flag uh, if that is known, like what trends um, have driven uh, what what sectors, sorry, have have driven this trend in the past, and. Um, you can upload um, here also um, if you wish uh, any supporting uh, graph, um, for example. So that brought us uh, to the end of this rather uh, uh, long uh, tab. And yeah, happy to ask any uh, answer, <laughs> any questions. OK. I think one um, question was on the uh, profile of gases, greenhouse gases. Um, a question from Arhus around, can we click yes on that profile despite not including NF3, which is mentioned? So if they're... Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I assume, um, but I just wanted to double check that. Um, there's also a question for, um, in the questionnaire, it says for each sector for which the total emissions are not available, please select a reason that best that fits best. Is it only for cells left blank or could it also apply to cells for which we have an inventory, but it does not fully cover the sector as defined by the mission? Yeah, um, no, um, it's for cells left blank. Um, this is interesting information, um, and but we would have needed to go uh, to a much, um, to even a, a, a more detailed level, of, like a, deeper level of granularity and offer here the subsectors. We did not want to, to do that at this point. Uh, so um, there is not really a space here to um, explain um, if the stationary energy uh, did cover something and not uh, something else. Um, this, um, if possible, can be covered by the supporting documentation that is uploaded. But this is already no, uh, also not the purpose of the exercise here, really. It's really to understand uh, where do cities uh, at the moment in these macro sectors have sufficient information um, and uh, which are sectors where uh, it's difficult for many cities uh, to to have uh, an estimation of inventories, as is typically the case for IPPU or um, even waste, wastewater in, in some cities is not a regular exercise. So um, the table below is really just for those where um, the cells here are left blank. Great, thank you. Specify what is stationary energy. Um, yeah, stationary energy um, is uh, the sector. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> not the best uh, name. Uh, we uh, also um, refer to it uh, uh, as buildings and uh, facilities. So uh, stationary energy covers all the uh, direct and indirect emissions um, from the buildings, the built environment, facilities and equipment in the city. That covers um, anything that is uh, combusted directly, um, like it can be um, yeah, whatever uh, heating equipment or, or other um, um, direct combustion of fossil fuels or um, everything that comes through the grid to those buildings, meaning uh, through the electricity grid and uh, through is provided through district uh, heating or uh, cooling uh, installations. There is a detailed breakdown um, of what the stationary energy sector covers also available in the info kit, but I hope that clarified. 
That, that's, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, I'm going to combine two questions on supporting documentation. Um, can that uh, supporting documentation for inventory should be machine translated into English completely, or can summaries in English be submitted along with the uh, supporting documents in the in the native language? Um, uh, there is no rule um, on this, but uh, I think the, the second proposal uh, sounds like uh, something that is, uh, is very reasonable, like provide uh, as a courtesy to us, <laughs> not to us, to the experts reviewing the application as summary, um, a translation of the summary and uh, the overall documentation in um, the original uh, language, it's always possible to upload more than one uh, document. It's specified also in the user guide how, how that is possible. Great. Hopefully that clarifies for a few folks. That's helpful. I think that's the questions I see on this tab. Um, we have a couple of questions remaining around policies um, and um, particularly the, the delineation. And these might be relatively quick to, to answer. So in the section current policies, which of the following areas does your city current energy policy address? Is it possible to tick a box if the policy is implemented at the metropolitan level and not directly by the city? Uh, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good question. Um, we are We'll be covering uh, that tab uh, in yeah. detail in the next webinar, but um, the intention here uh, would be really to capture what the city itself, meaning uh, the entity that is uh, coming forward with the expression of interest is implementing and not what other levels of uh, government, like a national or regional level, or in this case, a, a metropolitan uh, region are doing, but really to capture what um, yeah, the, the city, the entity that um, fills the expression of interest um, is currently um, implementing or undertaking. Okay, I'm just checking. Is there any? others i i'm scrolling through myself uh, if you don't mind i can pick a few yeah of course <laughs> While you're also looking through it um I, i'm just going from the end um the total provided in the table should correspond to the total giving at the uh, beginning of the question yes <laughs> that uh, that was uh, the logic indeed Um, the World Bank curb tool, um, yes, definitely, um, is one of the um, tools that um, is based on on, on common uh, greenhouse gas inventory uh, protocols. So, uh, if a city uh, has been using this uh, in the past, it may very well, um, yeah, use it uh, further. Okay, we have a couple of questions just jumping in. Uh, should scope three emissions be excluded here? For example, LCA emissions from bioenergy. Uh, uh, scope uh, three emissions, I'm not sure if I can like comprehensively answer this. I'm, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> in general, uh, scope uh, three emissions are uh, excluded from the uh, right. emission target by uh, 20. 30 uh, with one exception and that's the uh, waste sector uh, because indeed here uh, the origin of the waste uh, is in the city um, but it may be treated or brought to landfill or elsewhere uh, this should still be covered so no export of uh, waste emissions uh, simply by by tr treating it uh, outside the boundary um, when it comes to bioenergy um, here um, we do look at the um, actual um, carbon content uh, or uh, not sorry that's not the right word <laughs> the um, actual impact of the emissions of biomass for example uh, so here um, we would always need to uh, we can only apply a, a zero emission factor for biomass if that has been certified as such otherwise uh, it needs to be accounted for so maybe that's a very specific um, case and um, 
I'll, I'll try to offer like a more comprehensive answer um, to it uh, in the in the next webinar. But uh, indeed, a life cycle for biomass uh, is usually captured by the emission factors that we apply to it. So it's only zero if it's indeed zero, <laughs> and somebody has certified that. Great, thank you. Um, I th think we can answer this one quickly while you're. Um, continuing to check those, uh, Nadia, but one is for trends, is it mandatory to upload a document to justify there was a proper evaluation? No. Yeah. If available, that's great. If you have the document, it would be good to include, but it's not. That's mandatory. right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. If you want to capture any others in the scroll. I'm, I'm I'll, scrolling I'll... through as well. <laughs> There's a question about including um, attachments where uh, under questions where such an option is not clearly indicated in the questionnaire, but would be of, val of value. Yes, uh, there is no option in the questionnaire um, to upload any other uh, documents. Um, that is, um, Philip may. Um, uh, correct me, but uh, really linked to keeping uh, also the assessment of the experts um, like um, comparable and and uh, manageable. So uh, there is limited capacity to really um, work through uh, supplementary documents. So the essence should really be captured uh, in your answers to the questionnaire as such. And um, there are a few um, instances indeed where we ask you to provide additional uh, documents uh, where we felt it adds the most uh, value, but um, there is no space um, for uploading uh, any any other documents. Great. We have we have a couple of follow-ups now on the uh, emission side. And then Philippe, just going to flag for you, we have a couple of quick questions I want to come back to before we wrap up just double checking the threads here. One is, is there a list of zero emission certificates for biomass energy available or is it, or is it an ad hoc certificate from an audit firm? Um, I, um, th there, is, uh, there are criteria uh, available. Um, those are, for example, included in the um, guidelines made available through the uh, covenant uh, of mayors and i can uh, share also as a follow up uh, like the links uh, to these um, to these uh, criteria um, when it comes to ad hoc um, uh, certification um, i think that's also um, an option but i think we did not specify or, or at this point um, any any like uh, guidelines or, or uh, rules uh, in this context. But I think um, at this point uh, for filling in the, the questionnaire, this is also not uh, required. That will be then uh, detailed methodological uh, guidance that will be made available to the mission cities um, that will um, also include then uh, references to how um, sustainable biomass uh, can be uh, certified or what is considered really um, sustainable biomass in this context. Great, thank you. And then there's uh, a final question. Can you specify multiple other sectors if the default sectors uh, do not fit? Uh, no, I think that's not possible. You'd have to um, include like one number, but of course in the open text box, you can indicate multiple. That's perfectly uh, fine. But uh, in the table, um, you'd have to provide uh, one, one overall sum. Good. Um, as we're getting near the end of time, um, Philip, I'm just tracking back a couple of early questions related to the form of the commitment. Um, and, and I think we spoke to this, but maybe it's good to come back and just be as precise and explicit as we can. One is around the, uh, as a broad question about the nature of the document. 
that a city should provide a council decision, a formal letter uh, signed by uh, the legal representation, um, et cetera. So uh, let, let's just uh, reiterate what, what we see as uh, acceptable in terms of that level of commitment document. Philippe, do you wanna come in and speak to that? Yes, no problem. Uh, I think we are quite open in, when it comes to the, this uh, document. We mentioned the fact that we want to, to get a letter or a declaration. I'm just reading out the explanatory note that we have in the questionnaire as regard the supporting documents. So the text says, provide a letter or a declaration signed by a city representative, e.g. a mayor, a deputy mayor, or authorized delegated representative within the city administration confirming the city's interest to join the city's mission and to commit to the objective of reaching climate neutrality by 2030. So I, I think this is it. We don't need anything more than that at this stage. As I said, we should make the distinction between this call for expression of interest and uh, the submission of a climate city contract. It's a yes. completely different thing. So yep. we don't want to elaborate already your climate city contract and to have the mayor or the deputy mayor or any kind of representative committing to the fact that there will be climate neutrality by 2030 for the whole area of the of the city it's what we want the, the the city representative is to commit to a process and stress the ambition of the cities to commit to the objective of, of the mission namely to move towards climate neutrality by 2030. so we are not saying that you need to have signed with your blood this commitment that the whole city will be climate neutral by 2030. It's just the process that we want you to commit to and the fact that you are going to, 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 to join in, in that process and that there are some mitigating circumstances that have been described and explained a little bit today as regard the, the, the surface that will be uh, targeted, the offsetting, and uh, there again, there are quite a number of uh, information that uh, we include in the questionnaire that are not mandatory. And if you don't have information because you are still at a very early stage of the development of your reflection for reaching, for developing the strategy towards climate neutrality, it's perfectly okay to say it's not yet uh, identified or in progress. Great. All right, just a second here. We had a few more questions coming in. Um, okay, here's one relative to the inventory. So this is um, on point here for this webinar, not yet. Um, what can be selected in the question? Please indicate the boundary of the inventory relative to the city's administrative boundary. The inventory covers the administrative boundary, but is extended to include emissions resulting from electricity and heat consumption arising outside the commune scope two emissions and resulting from the management of waste generated in the commune scope three emissions, same or larger. I think, are you tracking that? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I, I fully captured it, but um, if um, it refers to this question, um, so where we um, indicate the boundary, like please indicate the boundary of the inventory relative to the city's administrative boundary. This would uh, refer to the uh, geographic area and not the um, like sources or sectors uh, covered. Um, all these um, of which uh, sectors and scopes are covered uh, would follow um, in the in the questions below. So um, if I understood correctly, but I'd need to read through the question uh, once again, it should be just the uh, same as the uh, entire administrative boundary. But um, I'll reread <laughs> if I find it here. It's in the Q&A box if you want to check. Yeah. It's one of the open okay, questions. Okay, now, yes. Okay, now I see. Mm. I know, same. In, it's it's the same. Um, if um, indeed uh, scope two emissions um, can arise outside the uh, commune, but that doesn't mean um, it's a very good question. In fact, um, that uh, the inventory boundary is uh, larger. The inventory boundary means that uh, 
through the scope to uh, emissions, the consumption of grid supplied uh, electricity, heat and coal is taking place within the city uh, boundary. So that's the boundary of the inventory, while the emissions as such may have um, occurred elsewhere where the energy was uh, generated. So it's still the uh, same as the administrative boundary in this case. Yeah. And this uh, same applies for, for waste, the same logic. Right, great. Okay, that's helpful, thank you. Um, I think that the remaining questions are pretty qualitative. Um, what I do not understand, cities depend largely on favorable conditions from the EU and national level for their implementation capacity though there is no mention to this and there are no options in this respect. I think um, the next two webinars will go more deeply into other aspects of this. And, and um, this was just the first part of the questionnaire. And we recognize the critical factors that are involved with the uh, cities and their relationship to national government, national policy, as well as the EU. And, and we're, we're quite clear about our work collectively is to help give the cities the ability to take the actions that are necessary. Part of it is looking at the climate city contracts as a tool to help with that. Um, and part of it is uh, the mission itself, uh, helping to unify and bring together multiple layers of government working in, in unison. And there was a, a, a Horizon Europe call that was issued earlier in the year, I believe in, over the summer uh, that closed uh, in the fall uh, to support the development of regional and national networks in support of the mission. And I believe that's yet another tool by which we're looking to help align national, uh, national and EU uh, programs and policies with the needs of cities in achieving this mission. Um, that's definitely a work in progress and there will be more to do in that regard. Uh, Philippe, I don't know if you want to say more to that. No, you're right. I mean, this is uh, the, the national dimension and uh, the regional dimension is essential for the success of the of this mission in a sense that uh, we will need to rely on the support from national authorities and regional authorities in uh, the successful implementation of the, the, the mission and uh, to support the cities in their transition toward climate neutrality. That means uh, support that can take several forms and uh, it's, uh, it could be about funding and uh, investment opportunity. But it's, uh, it might also, also be about uh, regulatory issues that might hamper the, uh, the transition towards climate neutrality. So it's very important to involve the national authorities. You mentioned this network of uh, national contacts that, uh, that we would like to support. This is indeed one of the, the components of the, 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 the city's mission and the governance of the city's mission that we would like to establish. And uh, very soon we will have the, I hope, we will have the opportunity to, to, to launch this, uh, this network of national contacts that will be the link between what is done at city level, at local level, and uh, what is being done and supported at national level. Great, thank you for that. And I know we're at time um, and uh, I'm not seeing any new questions. So I think we'll look to wrap it up, noting we have two more of these to come, which will go through both the rest of the questionnaire but also um, hopefully provide some opportunity if there are follow-on questions. I would also note that um, either through the, the commission's mission website or the Net Zero website, if you Net Zero Cities website, you can uh, reach out to us with specific questions and we'll try to help where we can because uh, we know there, there's, a, there's a lot to, to go through there. So with that, I wanna thank everyone. Um, thank Philippe and Nadia for all their work and preparation and. Uh, providing this information. Uh, this has been a, 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 very, a very extensive process pulling together this questionnaire and we look forward to uh, sharing the west, rest of it with you in the upcoming webinars and continuing to answer your questions and help you uh, as you consider and prepare your response to this call. So thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and, uh, and hope your week goes well.